Hi everyone, it's Carol from Crinkled Path Journals. I'm here with a challenge that has been started by my friends Kara at Paper Confessions with Kara Mia and Bianca with BB's Closet Creations. And the name of the challenge is What's in a Name? Tag Q&A. So for this challenge, I was tagged in Karamia's post from Tea Tuesday this week. And it's Friday, and this is late on Friday, but I was hoping to squeeze in this little challenge on a Friendship Friday, which Friendship Friday is hosted by Dale from Not Too Shabby Chic. But this challenge is really fun. I've been watching some of the videos already of people who have posted, and more and more creators are going to be tagged. So if you haven't been tagged yet, you can do this even if you haven't been tagged and you can tag other friends. The challenge is to do three things. One, explain how you decided on your channel name, give a little history, or maybe why you've changed it because a few people in our community have changed their names recently. And then number two, tag five crafty channel friends so that they share why they named their channel what they did. And third, tag Paper Confessions with Kara Mia and BB's Closet Creations since they are the originators of this collaborative challenge. So first, I'm going to tell you who I'm tagging. I'm tagging Just Journaling with Possum Patty. I'm tagging a couple of my retro loving friends, Meg at Chasing Retro. And because I'm very curious and she's also a retro lover, I'm tagging Jess at Picky Pulp. And then I'm tagging my two friends in Iowa, Angela the Traveling Crafter, who recently changed her name, and other Carol friend, <laughs> Lily Rose Blue. So I hope you guys will make videos sharing why your channel is named what it is. And here's a little history about how my channel came to be. I have a bunch of my junk journals in front of me that I have personally journaled in. And this one was one that my mom had me make for her. And so it's her journaling. So it's very precious to me. So I have to back up to 2002, I went through some pretty intensive counseling because I had some unresolved feelings about some things from my childhood. I got some amazing healing through a Christian counseling group that a few other ladies who were going through a similar walk. I basically had a lot of bitterness. I didn't want to live with that negative feeling towards anybody. And I've often heard the saying that unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to be hurt. Unforgiveness really gets us in the end. And so I walked through a journey then and had a lot of healing. And then a decade later, in 2012, my husband and I went through some training to do marriage counseling, Christian counseling through our church for other married couples. We learned some really valuable tools about how our past relationships affect our marriage relationships. And I'll try and keep this brief, but basically, as my husband and I walked through this process, both of us realized we didn't have many memories from our childhood. We knew we had bright spots in our childhoods and good things from our childhood. And it seemed like the hurt was kind of clouding that. In the process of going through the marriage material over a couple years, learning and getting trained and then doing it with other couples, we both started experiencing healing to where we started remembering. I started wanting to record those positive memories and those memories of gratitude for the good things that happened. That led to journaling. Let's go back to 2016. 
I discovered Bible journaling. I've always been very crafty, creative, love to draw, watercolor, paint, do all kinds of crafts, scrapbooking, stamping. I just love all that crafty goodness. And I started journaling with this Bible. It was my first Bible that I had as a journaling Bible. And I challenged myself to Bible journal, Bible art journal, every day for a year. And it actually went on much past a year. And I'll just flip through a little bit as I'm talking. Bible journaling really brought my faith and creativity together. And I started sharing it with friends who then became interested and ladies from church, the word started getting around. And I went to a conference, a Bible journaling day conference put on by Shauna Noel, And when I went to the conference, I met up with people from the church I had grown up in. I met up with some of some family friends who were there. And then I had a bunch of friends from my church who had come with me. Basically, what came about with those ladies was they asked if I would start teaching some Bible journaling classes because none of them had really started doing it yet. So I started doing that once a month through my church. What would happen is the ladies couldn't always come every month. So I started making a YouTube video of what I did in class. I would make the video at home. I did that strictly for the people who hadn't made it to class. Slowly but surely, a lot of people were subscribing to that channel. I think that channel still has over a thousand subscribers on it, but I have not added videos to it since discontinuing the class sometime in 2020. It was about that time that I started doing some crossover pages towards the end of teaching that class with some junk journaling in Bible journaling. <laughs> so how to use paper ephemera to do Bible journaling. So most of this is watercolor and India inks and just me drawing some of this is a napkin. Those videos are all still there, but they're very much me talking to my specific class. <laughs> when I was trying to come up with a name for that channel, my husband, he had come up with a name for me for a little game we used to play with our daughters, and he always called me Praise Girl. And at the time, it was playing the guitar, singing for our family ministry. And so when I started the Bible journaling channel, I named it Praise Girl, just from that. And then as I transitioned to junk journaling, I thought, well, I don't necessarily want to just shift that channel over to junk journaling. I want junk journaling to be something different. And so I started another channel. And I wish there was a way to actually combine the channels now because it is such a natural thing to go from art journaling to junk journaling and all kinds of journaling in my life, I kind of am regretful that I didn't just go from point A to point B in the same channel. But one of the things when I was Bible journaling was a hashtag that I used a lot was hashtag I love crinkled pages. Because when you Bible journal and you put this ink and paint and especially watercolor on your Bible pages, which are very thin, by the way. I spent a lot of time teaching about what to use in here so that you can still read, even if you're doing art. I taught a lot about what mediums work 
in your Bible journal that don't bleed through to the other page. When all the pages are painted on, it's very crinkly. And so I love, I love the sound and I love the hashtag. And junk journaling, the big thing that got me interested was vintage books, old ephemera, and it's more crinkly paper. My reason for junk journaling is about telling my story. It's about recording my memories and using ephemera that reminds me of things from my childhood and brings back the good memories. And so in each of my memory keeping posts on my channel, I always share stories about memories uh, tied to the ephemera and it's a really wonderful way for me to record all the positive memories that have come back and the more I share, the more I keep having. I have just enjoyed this so much and I've drawn a lot of in inspiration from the Rebookery channel and her telling of her childhood stories. And then so many junk journalers over the years who have just taught me the basics of how to make an altered book, which is what I use for my memory keeping, and also how to bind journals. Oops, my little balloons are sticking. The channel has kind of evolved as I started doing this and showing it to other people. I started having people come and ask for custom made journals and they would ask them to be along a theme so that they could record their memories in the best way possible by having things in the original journal that reminded them of their childhood or an era. Then people started asking me to make other themes and I just really enjoy the creative process of meeting the need of somebody who wants a journal and making it special to them. Like when my mom came to live with us in 2020, she was helping me pull things apart and she didn't really understand the concept. And then when she started seeing some of the journals I was making for some people, she said, would you please make me one? And so I was able to incorporate things from her lifetime into a journal. And then she brought me a stack of things that she wanted put in as well. And I also started making myself travel journals for our little trips we do or not this was a big trip. This was a whole month trip when I did this journal. I love the journals. I love all the ephemera. Amazing pieces that come together to weave a story. And if you've watched any of my memory keeping videos, you know, I always say I tell my story so that hopefully you can bravely tell your story and your story matters. So all that leads to I had crinkled or crinkles, I couldn't decide. And then I was thinking about the journey I had been on and how journaling has become part of that journey. And it's led me further down the road of healing and positive memories. And so I thought, well, that's kind of a path. And the path is a crinkled path. While I introduce myself as Carol from Crinkled Path Journals, I don't have the journals on my title because at the time, all I was thinking about was the process. So I don't know if I'll add that at some point or if it'll just stay crinkled path. But thank you for listening. And I hope that you will share where you're 
channel name came from. So if you are going to jump in on the challenge and tag some people, make sure you tag Paper Confessions with Karamia and BB's Closet Creations as the creators of this uh, collab. And then make sure you title it, What's in a Name? Tag Q&A. And then tag five of your crafty friends. Thank you so much for listening today. And I can't wait to hear more of your stories. Bye-bye.